Well, good evening, friends. Thanks for tuning in once again to Naki PC. This is our prayer meeting devotional uh, for the, the Wednesday before Christmas. We've been going through Isaiah chapter 40, uh, verses 1 to 11, and we're finishing with uh, those last three verses in that little section uh, just now tonight. But let's just read uh, all of those verses together again, please. Isaiah chapter 40, and verses 1 to 11. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Now we have considered those verses already. Verses 1 and 2. God will forgive our sins. Uh, the double, exactly folded over that picture. Exactly what we need. The exact salvation God will give it. Verses 3 to 5. God will make a way. He will do whatever it takes. He sent Jesus. The way, the truth and the life. Verses 6 to 8. God will keep his word. The word of God is not like the word of man, which changes all the time. And boy, do we know it. But let us know and love and obey God's word. And trust it. Trust him. Trust your saviour. Trust what he says now in these next verses, verses 9 to 11. This is good news. In a world full of bad news, these are great words. Verse 9 to 11. O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. And what we see here then in these verses 9 to 11 is this wonderful truth. God will save and God will keep his wandering sheep. This is good news. This is all good news. This is, this is the gospel. Jesus will come to seek and save those who are lost. The news here, it has come to Jerusalem, but it must not stay there. It must go beyond Jerusalem. It must go into all the world. It must go viral, as we say these days. Verse 9. O Zion, you who bring good tidings, Get up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, you who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. We have work to do. Believer, you are part of Zion now. You are a citizen of the new Jerusalem because you have heard and believed the good news of Jesus. And now... Get up, go and tell it to others. We're commanded here, don't be shy. Lift up your voice with strength. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to tell the good news because it is true. It is true. God 
knows, of course, what we're like. And, and we tend to talk rather timidly about the Lord. And yes, we do get afraid. What will people say? What will people think? How will I be received? But the Lord, remember, he has moved heaven and earth to make the good news. Let us not be backward in proclaiming it. And the message here, it may be as simple as, Behold your God. See what God is really like. We're, we're to tell people what he's like, what he has done for us. We're to say to others, look, look at, at what he has done for me. We're to tell people, don't go by what the world tells you about Jesus. Look at him. Behold him for yourself. Open a Bible, see him there from the very first page, and behold your God. We're going to meet him one day. Your neighbours will meet him one day. Everyone in your family will meet him one day. But behold him now. And behold him most clearly in his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 1 teaches us in verses 1 to 3, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Yes, behold him, behold the Lord Jesus, not only in the manger, behold him on the cross, behold him risen, behold him seated at the right hand, behold his glory. And behold what he has done. Behold what he has done in verses 10 and 11. In verse 10, he comes with a strong hand. He came. He came in weakness. He came, and yes, he was laid in the manger. But he didn't stay there. He grew up and he defeated sin and death. He came to rule. He came to establish a spiritual kingdom that shall have no end. He came to be our salvation. He came to level mountains and fill valleys and make a way for us to go to heaven. Such was his work spoken of here. His work which lay before him was the cross. And he came and he fulfilled it. It is finished was his cry. And he was rewarded for it. His name is now above every name. And to his name, every knee shall bow. He alone is the victor, the champion over sin and death. But notice also that in verse 11, he comes with tenderness. Yes, he is the strong one, the almighty one, the awesome one, the all conquering champion. But he is also the good shepherd. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. Aren't those brilliant words? We need him. We need him to be strong. We need him to defeat sin and death for us. We can't do that. We need his forgiveness. We need him to take the double for us. There is no comfort at all in these verses uh, without forgiveness. There's no comfort for sinners unless we first receive forgiveness from Jesus. But we do need more than that. We need him to keep us. If Jesus were simply to forgive you all your sins right now, you'd still be guilty and deserving of hell before you went home. It's not, it's not the way it is. We, we, we sin day and daily. And if God forgive us and then just you know, let us go on and try and keep a clean sheet from that moment forward, it wouldn't be enough. 
But his grace, his beauty, his salvation is so much more. I mean, his word of salvation, it's not like the grass of the field. His grace lasts forever. He does not just forgive us and then ask us to live sin free from that point on. We couldn't do that. And so he forgives us and he becomes our shepherd. This is comfort for imperfect Christians. And that's for me. And that's for you this evening. This is real comfort for Christians who still stumble and sin. I need this and you need this. We need Jesus, not only to save us, not only to forgive us, but to also keep us. He has made a highway there in verse 3. We saw that. And he will keep us on that highway. He will feed us. He will tend us. He will gather us in his arms and carry us along. We're not left to fend for ourselves on that highway. We're not left to depend on some kind of spiritual satnav to, to guide us to glory. No, he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He knows what we're like. He knows that we'll wander. And so he comes to walk with us and carry us along. Are you on that highway then to heaven this evening? Are you walking with the Lord Jesus? He has made a way. Make sure you're on it. Repenting from sin, trusting in Jesus as the one who took your punishment for you. He has kept his word. Be in it. Be reading it and studying it and loving it and obeying it. Be strengthened by it. He will save his wandering sheep. and He will never, ever let you go. So be comforted, please, by this message again tonight, believer. Be strengthened by his grace. But also use that grace to get up onto the high mountain. Lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say to your friends and family and neighbours, Behold, your God. Amen.